welcome and thank you for tuning in to the Lake Houston Area Chambers State of the County Luncheon with Harris County Commissioner, Precinct 4, R. Jack Cagle. The presenting sponsor of today's luncheon is Generation Park and McCord Development. Our silver sponsor is Plains State Bank. I'm your MC today, Danny Sullivan, owner of Sullivan's Truck and Auto and Collision and also the Lake Houston Area Chamber incoming board chair. We're so glad you're here with us today. Now, Commissioner Cagle will update us on the state of Harris County and answer questions submitted by our viewers as time allows. You'll notice that you're muted and all the guests will remain muted throughout the program. Now, if you have any questions for Commissioner Cagle, please use the question function located at the bottom of your screen. We encourage you to go ahead and enter your questions now for the commissioner and not wait until the end of the program. We're very grateful to have the support of our presenting sponsor, Generation Park and McCord Development. And joining us from Generation Park is Rick Yarborough, Director of Land Management. Rick's gonna say a few words on behalf of Generation Park and McCord Development, and then he's gonna introduce our speaker today. So now it's my pleasure to turn it over to your good friend and mine, Mr. Rick Yarborough. Thank you, good afternoon. <clears throat> In spite of all of the coronavirus pandemic uh, shutdowns and such, Generation Park uh, has been extremely busy. Uh, our restaurants are back open and exciting to see their customers return and eat in or take out uh, as they can, you know, have their favorite meals. Our apartment 255SA, uh, the top tier living site in Redemption Square has been leasing up rapidly. And we're excited about that. The Marriott Courtyard in Redemption S Square has gained momentum uh, and operations is slated to start in early 2021. We've also, to give you an update, our first medical office building uh, to, is going to be going to the market uh, with discussions underway with all of the major uh, health care providers in the marketplace as well as private practices. You know, for any more updates or interest in any of the things going on at General uh, Generation Park, if you will check out our website uh, as well as if you have any questions, you can reach John Flournoy, our VP of Sales and Marketing. Now it's my honor to introduce you to our speaker today. Commissioner Jack Cagle has served as County Commissioner for Harris County Precinct 4 since 2011. Uh, he was reelected in 2014 and again in uh, 2018. As our Commissioner, uh, Cagle represents nearly 1.3 million residents, a staff of 433 employees, and a budget of over $283 million. He spent 30 years working with and serving the citizens of Harris County Precinct 4 as an attorney, elected judge, and now as our county commissioner. Until his appointment to the commissioner's court, he served for 11 years as judge of Harris County Civil Court of Law Number 1. He is a graduate of Rice University with triple majors in economics, history, and managerial studies, as well as a graduate of Baylor Law School married to Janet and have three wonderful children, Richard, Victoria, and Elizabeth. So with that, I want to turn this over to Commissioner Cagle. It's always great to have you back with us. What a delight and a privilege to be with the Lake Houston Chamber today. Uh, I, I feel honored that I get to give the state of the county address. I, I almost feel like I should have a, a fanfare of music in the background uh, as as I begin. But uh, if if I was to have a musical background for my comments today, um, I had one of my staffers a little while back that said, you know, we, we ought to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, and recently I had a chance to watch an old Clint Eastwood movie. It's a long one, but it's a goodie. And, uh, and it is the good the bad and the ugly. And, and we seem to have a lot of that in the times that we live in today. Uh, and so I'll, I'll start off with, with some of the good in terms of what's going on in the county. And part of one of the good things is, is that in terms 
of our pushing forward with regard to our infrastructure, our parks and our, our road projects, uh, we are on track. Uh, they have not been slowed down by the, uh, the COVID-19 incident uh, and the things that have been addressed with that. And in fact, our parks have been flourishing in these days. One of my parks people uh, coined the phrase, every day a Saturday. And in essence, what he was saying is, is that although normally Saturdays are our boosted time where we had added people coming into our parks, we are now in a place to where with so many people being shut into their homes and having no place to really go, uh, although we're starting to reopen now quite a bit, uh, every day is a Saturday because that is the place for folks to be able to stretch their legs, to bring their families, to be able to safely get out, breathe the air and enjoy our environments. And we've got 43 parks in Precinct 4 that are there to serve you. Uh, and and they are they are kicking in full gear to try to make sure that that every day can be a Saturday for our constituents and our parks as part of the good news serve multiple purposes uh, they serve this place for us to help us with our mental health and and our physical health during uh, these times that we find ourselves in and even when we don't have these uh, challenges before us but they also provide us with a protection of a different nature. Whenever we have a flood or other type crises along uh, those natures, our parks fill up with water. And on the one hand, we say, oh, this is a terrible thing that our park is now filled up with water. But on the other side, it is a beautiful thing um, because water has to be pushed somewhere. And whenever something is put up, it has to move water somewhere else. And our parks are a great place with this green space that we have. We now have uh, a Long Spring Creek uh, green space to where we've acquired uh, park land that we can use when it is dry, but when it is wet, it becomes a green space for the water to be pushed in going all the way from Tomball through to Kingwood. And I was sharing with uh, uh, our uh, director of the programs or master of ceremonies a little bit earlier today that off of Hamblin Road right now we actually are in the process of developing Edgewater Park which literally is on the edge of the water and uh, that particular park is one that's a partnership with Harris County and Harris County Precinct 4 and with uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife which has provided us with a grant that is allowing us to be able to provide uh, park amenities to the edge of the water and ultimately we'll have uh, a public boat launch that'll be there and other park type amenities as it continues to be developed and designed and as we move forward which will be of service in that area. Our trails are continuing to be developed and ultimately we we currently have our, our Greenway Trail that connects all the way from 45 and a little bit on the other side of I-45 all the way through to 59 we still need to develop the, the hook up there so we can actually ride across the bridge and to come into Edgewater Park and then from Edgewater Park tie into all of the trails that are already available and existing in Kingwood, a lot of which will be along the, the Hamblin Road pathway and we're constantly trying to work with partners, uh, including uh, you know the, the tiers in your area as well as the city of Houston with the Parks Board. And so there are a lot of exciting things that are going on in our region with regard to our continued investment in our infrastructure and the direction that we're going in. And so we, we, we hope that that is something that, that gives a little bit of, of, of that goodness that's there. In the midst of the tragedy, uh, we have had uh, a lot of good things that have happened. We, we have been able to feed thousands of people who have been our shut-ins. Our, uh, our senior adult program, which we call our Encore program, um, has our, our buses obviously during this period of time have not been able to be utilized because of, of the connection of folks that are there. But, but our drivers who normally would be out driving folks have been utilizing their time of being able to make health and wellness calls to those who have been shut in. 
and that's been very touching with regard to the thousands of health and wellness calls that they've been able to make upon our most vulnerable populations uh, in terms of their age and their ability to get around. We've had um, our, our uh, distributions of hand sanitizers and our distribution of, of face masks, and I think that we've been partnering with your chamber as well as with other chambers to make sure that uh, if there are businesses or entities that need to have those types of support, that, that we are a facilitator for trying to connect between those who are donating the products and to making sure that they are getting to uh, the people that are out there that need them most. And, and if you become aware of a need, we ask that you uh, send us an email. Uh, Harris County Precinct 4, Community Assistance Department, let us see if we can make sure that we can step in and assist you in that gap because we, we at the end of the day, we are public servants here to try to serve the community in which we are located. And we very much value our partnerships both with your, with your, uh, with your chamber as well as with your nonprofits and with uh, all of our folks that we get to work together and breathe with. There is the bad. Um, you know, with regard to the, um, uh, this COVID-19 situation, we've, we've had, uh, we've had fatalities. Um, the numbers that I had that came in today show us that we have 332 deaths. Two of those were friends of mine. Um, as part of the ugly of that, um, in the midst of that, though, we, we have had a, 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 another bad thing is we've had a little bit of a spike that's occurred here. We went from 17,000 to 23,000 cases. Um, however, at the same period of time, our folks that had recovered moved from 7,000 that have fully recovered to 8,400 that have recovered. We're doing testing right now. Turner Stadium uh, in Humble ISD, we did a lot of testing in that this last week in our partnership with Humble. Pridgham Stadium over in Sci Fair is an active site. Um, we have had a mobile site that's been set up over at the Humble Civic Center. Um, City of Humble has been a great partner for us in providing uh, mobile site testing, and, and we do encourage your folks that if they have children that want to have tested, that they go to one of our mobile sites as opposed to one of the permanent sites, because in the mobile sites, they have the ability to test children under the age of 14. They have a, the, navel, the nasal swab that is there. At this point in time, we anticipate that uh, our, our overall statewide positive rate of those that tested has remained at about 6%. Our general beds that are available in Harris County are 11,480 beds. Um, and of those beds though, we have uh, 1,697 that are being occupied Harris County wide. That's terrible. On the other hand, it's, it's not what we were afraid of. Once upon a time, we feared that we would have upwards of 30% of our population that would catch this disease. And currently, the percentage of our population that has it in Harris County is 0.5%, a little bit less than a half of a percent. Uh, everyone is critical. And if uh, someone has it, there is a great chance that, that they, uh, uh, there is a chance that they may not make it. Our survival rate in Harris County right now, according to the latest stats from, from CETRAC, is 98.46% chance. So you've got a little bit better than a 1.5% chance that if you catch this, that you, we may lose you. And so be careful. Uh, use good common sense when you are out there. Be safe and make wise decisions. And if you have a compromised system, because most of the folks that are the ones that we lose are the ones that have some sort of complication or compromise in their system, use wisdom, be careful, be safe when you're out there. One of the things that, that I have seen that we have to be very, very careful about though is, is a lot of the folks that test, they turn out to not have it. But many of them uh, have the regular flu. And in fact, I think that one of the stats earlier on was that nine out of 10 of the folks that tested that had flu-like symptoms, nine out of 10 had the regular flu, and one out of the 10 had COVID-19. And there would be this sense of relief that they had the regular flu. Well, the regular flu has a 1% chance that it will kill you as well. And so even though you have a greater chance that you will be harmed 
um, and we could lose you if you have COVID than if you have the regular flu. If you're the nine out of 10 that's thinking that you can relax your health uh, protocol because you're one of the nine that didn't have COVID but have the regular flu, please hydrate, rest, see your physician, take care of yourself because you're still at some risk. And so we don't wanna have a false euphoria over there when you're the nine out of 10 that has the regular flu and you say, oh, I'm fine. Um, be safe, be careful, and take care of yourself. Um, in, in the realm of uh, what is occurring out there, we do have a mask order uh, that went into effect uh, yesterday. Penalties will be attached to it on Friday that was issued by the judge. Um, and um, there will be a fine that uh, she would impose of $1,000 for those that violate the order. Uh, this was um, issued pursuant to her emergency powers. Um, part of the order that I do uh, like is the idea that businesses get to put up a sign where basically they say no shirt, uh, no shoes, no mask, no service. And I'm a big fan of every business getting to control their business the way that they want to and to have that. Um, and I, I want to make sure that um, um, I'm supportive of businesses making healthy, safe decisions. And I'm a big fan of individuals making healthy, safe decisions. I don't know that I'm such a fan of having uh, penalties and fines uh, being imposed on folks, but, but that is, uh, that's not my call at this time. And so we encourage everyone because on Friday is when the penalties and fines start to take effect and the penalties and fines will be attributed to the business owners. And so we ask that you go to readyharris.com, which is the judge's website that she uses to communicate to make sure that you're in compliance. If you have questions on, on how to make sure that we can assist you, we would love to work with our chambers to make sure that everybody is in uh, a good place. I'm, I'm someone who's been a long advocate that I like asking people to do what's best as opposed to ordering people what to do is best. But the reality of it is, is that we have an order uh, with penalties and fines that are going to come in, uh, that order will be effective on Friday. Um, normally, when you see me out there wearing a mask, you'll say the the better angels of our nature, which is a quote from Abraham Lincoln, which references how we should do the right things because we want to. Um, and so I encourage everyone to do the right things because you want to. Uh, and even if you don't want to, just be aware that we'll have some orders that'll be coming down. Flood control. Uh, we have had uh, 241 projects that were specified in the flood control bond that was approved a year after Harvey came into effect. And uh, when I first began to serve here in, in Precinct 4 as a commissioner, we were in a drought. I don't know if anybody remembers the days of the drought, but, but, but we were in a drought. And in those days of the drought, um, a lot of folks weren't really thinking too much about what was going on. Well, since that period of time, we've had five 100-year floods, two 500-year uh, floods, and two 2,000-year uh, floods. And so I'm very sensitive to what is going on with regard to the flood control issues and the drainage and the water issues that are there. The good news in our good, bad, and ugly the good news is that most of our flood control projects of the 241, all but about 37, have been initiated. They've been launched. They're underway in some stage. Uh, eight of them countywide have been completed. Uh, most of those were the ones that were just kind of ready and needed to be finished off. But in terms of our progress, we're doing really, really well in terms of initiating. Now, in any project, you have four stages. You've got the planning stage, the pre-planning stage, the study phase. You've got the planning stage, which is the design stage. You've got the preparation stage where you have to move your utilities and acquire your right of way to be able to do the project. And then you have the production phase, which is, which is construction. So all projects have a lifespan that go through a series of time to be completed. But the good news is that all but a few 
have now been initiated out of that 241 that were approved of by the voters in our uh, 23 public engagement meetings that we had. Now, one project that I get a lot of questions, and there are 17 Harris County flood control projects that are going on in the Humble Kingwood area. Uh, with the number of maintenance and repair projects that are there. You can go to the Harris County Flood Control um, uh, website to track all of these projects to see what their progress is. Of those projects, uh, we've already spent 15 million of about 43 million that were budgeted in the area. 38.1 million of those have been funded. In other words, they're already into the hopper uh, for that process. Some of those projects you're familiar with are the studying of the San Jacinto watershed, improvements to Greens Bio down, down south, and we are um, in the process of negotiating on Perry Homes, uh, with Perry Homes in that area. Commissioner's Court has approved to uh, partner with the city of Houston in the acquisition of that land um, that could assist in Elm Grove and in the series of drainage projects that need to be done along the watershed. A lot of folks think that if you just have one project, one place along a watershed, that that solves the problem. But the truth of the matter is, is that it needs to be like a string of pearls. And you need to have projects that are all along the waterway. And this would be towards the headwaters of the flood, fl flood flow that come into Harris County. The problem is, is that this, this property is in the city of Houston limits, ETJ, but in Montgomery County. Uh, Harris County has uh, begun negotiation. And in fact, our flood control and the uh, uh, capital improvement and infrastructure department of the city of Houston will be uh, having discussions this week on uh, what we've approved in commissioner's court of a three-step approach. One is, is that if we partner for the acquisition of that property, the city of Houston would uh, partner with us. They have some cash flow issues, but they have some properties that Harris County Flood Control needs to be able to help provide better flood control within the city of Houston. That's sort of a win-win. Instead of us having to buy property from the city of Houston, to do flood control projects within the city of Houston, we're asking that the city of Houston, uh, uh, in exchange for their half of the purchase price of the property there at Elm, uh, above Elm Grove in the Perry Homes property, which we can get at a good price right now, uh, that they contribute uh, property in lieu of contributing cash. That's a win-win. That, that reduces our cost on the county side and reduces the cost to on the city side for us to be able to move forward. Uh, a second requirement is that the city uh, adopt fully the Atlas 14 drainage criteria. Um, many of us realize that with all of these 100 year floods and all of these 500 year floods and then these 2000 year floods that maybe the old data for what uh, constituted a 100-year flood wasn't quite accurate anymore because somehow or another, if you add all that up, we would be back to the dawn of, uh, of the ages of cavemen and, uh, and the dinosaurs. And so uh, we have new data, which is the Atlas 14 criteria, and we are requesting that the city of Houston adopt those. They've already adopted most of them. And so that's not a hard ask, that we have some consistency through our ETJ uh, extraterritorial jurisdiction and in the other areas in the county so that when we build a flood control project that we're all in the same standard to make sure that that safety is consistent across the board for everybody. It's also good for businesses because you don't want to have some businesses that be able to have one set of rules in one part of town and that's your competitor and you have to have a higher standard in another part of the county um, but that across the board, the rules are the same, the standards are the same, that they're good, healthy standards that are based upon the existing science that we have in terms of uh, what constitutes uh, safe drainage in our region. And then the third thing is that in terms of the ultimate development of the property, we're requesting that the city of Houston also partner with us on those costs. And it could be on the same basis as the project acquisition costs. So um, we are optimistic that these are reasonable requests and that the city 
uh, would be able to work these out and that we will continue to have a willing seller uh, who is wanting to uh, sell at a, at a reasonable price, at a very reasonable price to the county uh, and to the city in a joint partnership that benefits and helps everybody. Um, and so that's the sort of the status of that. I know that the city of Houston has already made an application uh, underneath SB7 and SB8 uh, for the flood infrastructure fund that is being managed by the Texas Water Development Board. And so uh, they have already begun that process of being able to try to actually find some additional funding to assist us in this development of trying to make sure that we catch that first of a series of detention facilities along our watershed to keep us all safe. And, and, I, and I know that I've been criticized for being overly simplistic, but water flows downhill. And, and, I, and my apologies for being overly simplistic, but if we're to assist ourselves, and this is one of the things about the flood bond, we need to attack water at the top of the hill, we need to attack it in the middle of the hill, we need to attack it at the bottom of the hill. That's your cork on the bottom. You need to make sure that the water flows out uh, appropriately on the bottom. And if we attack it systemically through the entire system, then we can spread it out and we can defeat it as opposed to having it hit us in the differing pockets along the way. We can, we can, uh, and you know, I need to be careful. You never can defeat nature. Uh, nature can always throw a curve at you, but, but uh, by the grace of God, uh, we can do our best to, to make sure that we make as many people as possible, safe as possible, as quickly as possible. And so uh, with regard to the state of the county, uh, we've got some good stuff that's going on. Um, we've got some bad stuff that's going on, and we have a few things that are a little ugly that we, we have to deal with and, and to get ourselves through. But I am optimistic. We live in a county and a region with can-do people who rise when challenges are there. Um, when, when, you know, Harvey hit, when Melda hit, when the tax day flood hit, when these other events, uh, neighbors stopped to help neighbors. Uh, when we're in a crisis and we take our old dump trucks and we use them as emergency water rescue vehicles, half the time, by the time we get to the spot to where we've heard that there are folks that were stranded, their neighbors got them out on their own. And so we live in an incredible place to where people take care of their neighbors and care about their community. And, and you, in your community, demonstrate that all the time. And so I consider it a privilege uh, to be able to, to work with and to serve in your area. Thank you for that opportunity to, to be able to be here with you in the midst of the good and the bad and the ugly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you for your leadership. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, questions come in, and if anybody else has questions, now's the time to go ahead and submit them uh, through the question and answer feature in Zoom. Um, we're gonna do our best to answer each question addressed uh, either by getting the Commissioner to answer them live or through the text response in the question uh, and answer platform. And so uh, I'd like to first look at the one, I think you had mentioned that uh, Edgewater Park was coming along and the work that was happening there uh, on Hamblin Road. And somebody had sent in a question about when uh, the projected opening date for the park is and will it have uh, canoes available? Um. I think I have Kennedy who is uh, online and so she can look up through our CIP on what our current projected date is for when it opens up. But as to the question of canoes, the answer is yes. Uh, and in fact, you can use canoes now. We ask that you uh, contact our trails as parks department. Um, 
our community assistance department can connect you there. If you have a group of 10 or more, uh, we love to take groups out and to utilize our canoes. Uh, we are mostly operating out of Jones Park and up in other parts of Spring Creek slash uh, Cypress Creek and our San Jacinto watershed as it comes through. But yes, there will be canoes that are there. We love working with our Boy Scouts in particular, but we make those canoe opportunities available to everybody. There'll also be fishing there uh when when that's opened up with the exact date uh we can try to get what the current projection is i can't tell you what that is right now thank you commissioner um, another question that just rolled in is businesses are already strapped financially is there anything that can be done to reduce the burden of uh, the covid fines for not having masks a uh, thousand dollar fine imposed on a small business might exactly be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And in a second part, um, there's another question where uh, they're wanting to know if a customer is not present, do the employees still need to have a mask on? Those questions I would send to readyharris.org and I would. Um, have, have our businesses express their opinions and their views. Uh, right now, there's one person that's making these decisions, and that's the county judge underneath the emergency powers. And I think that she would listen to businesses if they would write her and tell her what the impacts of these decisions are and how they can be. I think that the current goal is to educate as opposed to punish uh, and I hope that that stays the goal. I believe that we need to encourage and to educate and to assist. Uh, that's, that's my belief. We do also have a COVID relief fund. There, there are actually two. One is already gone. And uh, the second one that will be coming online is uh, there will be 200,000, 207,000 Harris County residents uh, I mean, there's 30 million relief fund that should be available soon, and you can find out about it by going to readyharris.org. Um, also, there's a phone number that's out there, which is 832-848-0214. I know that we're also trying to get some rent relief, um, and by that, there's a disagreement in commissioner's court on how it ought to be best done. I believe that if you have rent relief and there's an eviction proceeding that's underway, that the uh, rental assistance should be paid as part of that proceeding to the landlord in exchange for them dropping the procedure so that the landlord is protected as well as the tenant. Um, there are others that believe that uh, funds should just be get issued to a tenant, uh, whether it be residential, uh, usually residential, without regard to making sure that it goes to the actual rental relief. Uh, I happen to know that many of the folks from my days before being a commissioner as a judge that, that, that are the landlords in a situation lived in a larger house, moved out of the larger house to move into an apartment. That house is now their source of income in their golden years. And if they aren't able to collect the rent for that, then they end up losing that house, their investment due to their mortgage being foreclosed on them. And so it's a more complicated situation. Uh, with regard to that rental relief. But again, you can have a say uh, in terms of at least expressing yourself. And to that, I want to drive our, our, our members and our listeners to the readyharris.org website. Okay. Thanks so much, Commissioner. We really appreciate all the great information. Um, Jenna, if we don't have any other uh, questions rolling in, I think we can start wrapping things up. Let me check with my producer here. Van, did you see anything additionally? Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, if you have anything additional, uh, we'd be happy to respond uh, uh, by email. Um, if you have another question, don't hesitate to call us. Um, and again, Commissioner, thank you for uh, your leadership and thank you for sure for participating in our virtual luncheon today. And thank you to everyone who's joined us online. Um, today's session was recorded. It'll be available to view and share on Facebook. Uh, we'd like uh, once again to recognize our sponsors, uh, Generation Park, 
and McCord Development, and of course our silver sponsor, Plains State Bank. Another important thank you goes out to DNA Studios, Sam Schrade and his awesome staff for producing today's virtual meeting. Now, remember to save this date. Tuesday, July 21st, we'll have our State of the State Luncheon at noon. We've got a great lineup of speakers uh, to give updates on the state, including our very own state representative, Dan Huberty. Uh, Sean Miller, Assistant Chief at the Texas Division of Emergency Management, uh, will be here to discuss hurricane preparedness and emergency management. Also, we'll have Tom McCarty, Director, External Relations Division at the Texas Workforce Commission. Now, Tom's gonna discuss all the upgrades and new ways they're working to handle the pandemic response. Now, we've enjoyed all the time we've had to get today <clears throat> and look forward to hosting you next month. Until next time, God bless. <laughs>